And welcome everybody to CCNA Sunday. It is great to have you here. I uh, I see a lot of uh, familiar names uh, in the queue or in the in the room with us together. So Pat, hello, so glad to see you. Gus, hello, so glad to see you. And everybody else who is, just wants to come here for basically three reasons. Uh, one of three reasons. One, we want to learn about some new technology. Two, we know the technology, but we want to reinforce it. Or third, you know what? Gosh golly, we just want to have some fun hanging out with some people, with like-minded people, and we have to be talking about tech. But anyway, um, in this CCNA Sunday, we're going to focus on DHCP. It's a really cool acronym. Give me a D, give me an H, give me a C, give me a P. And uh, it stands for the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So let's start off with what is a host? This is a host. Uh, any computer, any device that's on a network would be considered a host. That could be uh, an Android phone or an Apple phone or an iPad that's online or a computer, Macintosh, Linux, uh, Windows, um, you name it. Anything that's on an IP network can be considered a host. And the challenge is, is that if you and I have four or 500 devices in our enterprise or a thousand devices in our enterprise, let me share with you what is a pain to do. And that's this. <laughs> Let's take a look at a topology and then we'll go to a device. Let me uh, minimize that. Very good. Okay, so here, this is a pain. If we had to do this for hundreds of PCs, it would be a pain. First of all, we'd have to determine what the network is. So this client PC right here, and let me get out a drawing tool. It seems like I always forget something. Uh, and that's it today, drawing tool. All right, so there's a drawing tool I have. And if we had to, so for VLAN 10, so this PC here is in VLAN 10, and this PC is in VLAN 20, and this PC is in VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. Now, if you don't yet know what a VLAN is, uh, please check out the playlist off of the YouTube channel, and just they go in order. And a VLAN is nothing more than a layer two broadcast domain. Think of it like a room, where all the devices in that same room uh, are also going to share the same IP network address space. So, if we had, let's say, 100 clients in VLAN 10, here's what would be a pain to do. And now. I have to also uh, mention, if you're being paid by the hour, maybe this is a good idea, but it would be to go to every single machine and manually configure the IP address information on that computer like this. So we go to, uh, and it's going to vary a little bit based on the type of computer that we have, but imagine we go to a, a Windows computer, this is a Windows 10 machine, and you know, Windows changes, uh, Windows 10 uh, every six to eight to 10 months changes how you get to stuff. They're trying to make it easier and easier. So, but on this one, on this version of Windows, if we went to uh, network connections and we went to this network interface card, went to properties, and then we went to IPv4 and we clicked on okay or double clicked on it to go to the properties of IP version four. <laughs> go to properties of IP version four and I, I should actually do what I say. So I'm gonna click on IPv4 and then click on properties to go to the properties. If we went to all 100 machines and had to make presents, this represents the network portion because of the mask. And so this is the 10.16.0 network, and then the host address would be .10. And then we also would want to put in a default gateway that tells this device, hey, uh, you know, if you ever need to forward a packet to anything else that's on a dynamically giving clients an IP address. And it goes something like this. If, if you and I are gonna role play this, let's imagine that we're, a, that we're a, a device that needs an IP address. If we've been told to use dynamic host configuration protocol to automatically get an IP address, here's what we do. We, in fact, let me show you how you, we would enable it. So all we would do is we would go to this interface right here. So this is this network interface, properties of TCP IP, and we would just click this radio button obtain an IP address automatically, what that really means is B uh, DHCP, a dynamic host configuration protocol client. And poof, it'll go to work. And so if it goes to work behind the scenes, here's what it will go ahead and do. It will shout. Now, when I say shout in IP, TCP IP and IP version four, we're talking about a broadcast. And so basically this PC sitting in its VLAN will shout and send a broadcast saying, I'm looking for a DHCP server. Now a DHCP server, from one of our earlier discussions, a server is somebody who provides network services and a client is somebody who asks for DH, uh, network services. 
So in this case with DHCP, the client would issue a DHCP request. So it would go something like this. Hey, I'm looking for a DHCP server. And actually, literally, it's called a discover. I'm trying to find if there's a DHCP server out there. And if there's a DHCP server out there, let's go ahead and change hats here. If we're a DHCP server on that local network and we hear the broadcast, whoa, that person's looking for a DHCP server. We can go ahead, if we're a DHCP server now, we can respond, hey, I'm a DHCP server, and we can make an offer. So we're basically offering a beautiful IP address, right part of town, correct length, the mask is all perfect, default gateway information is all perfect. And we make this offer. And then the client who gets that message saying, wow, great IP address, I'll take it. And that's referred to as a request. And so if the client says, I'll take it, and then the DHCP server says, okay, I'm going to make a note of that, puts a little check in the checkbox and says, great. I, I, I've acknowledged that you've got that IP address. I'll put that in my database, keep track of it. And feel free to use that for like four days or eight days or some period of time, referred to as the least time. So that process that goes back and forth between a DHCP server and client is often referred to as the four packet exchange and it's called Dora, like Dora the Explorer. And why is that? That's because it helps us to remember the four pieces involved in a DHCP discussion. So if we were going to write those out, which we are right here, let me go ahead and bring up another layer. So I'll minimize that and minimize that. And here we go. Let me bring up another layer. So let's imagine that this is a DHCP server and it won't be too tough because it is. Uh, if we had a client in that same local network as the DHCP server, the client would issue a discover message. That's the D. And then the server would send an offer. And in that offer, it says, hey, here's an IP address I have configured that you can that I have set up that you can use. And also here's a default gateway. They call those options. And here's a DNS server you can use and all of, a bunch of other information that the client can use. And if the client likes it, the client sends over a request saying, hey, beautiful, I would love it. And then the server does the final message of this four-way four -way process called an acknowledgement, which basically tells this client, yeah, you've got it, and uh, I know you've got it, and life goes on. So that's it, D-O-R-A. So if you ever need to remember the four major packets involved with the client initially getting an IP address from a DHCP server, it is DORA, Discover, Offer, Request, and Acknowledgement, just like that. So you know, what I, you know what I like to do, or I like to do with you occasionally, is uh, actually do some confirmations. So we've taken a look at the problem, which is ass manually assigning IP addresses to every single device, and the correct mask, and the default gateway, and everything else. So instead, we can automate that with DHCP by having a DHCP server, and that DHCP server is then able to listen to local requests, people looking for IP addresses, and then handing them out. So discover from the client, offer, request, and acknowledgement, D-O-R-A. And you know what we can do? Oh my gosh, you're gonna love this. Check this out. We've talked about the protocol stack before, in fact, a few times, and whether you're playing a game with virtual reality or an online game, or you're going to a website, or you're visiting YouTube or Twitch or whatever, your computer in the background is going through this process of identifying and, and using protocols in this beautiful TCP IP protocol stack. So if I bring up another layer, which I'm gonna do right there, um, let's, uh, let's do the example of a client getting an IP address via DHCP because that fits in here also. So let's imagine this client right here who's doing the discover message. Now, behind the scenes, when we click that radio button, on the computer that says obtain an IP address automatically. In the background, our client is going to be using an application layer service. And that application layer service is called DHCP. Ta-da! And at layer four in the, trans in the TCP IP protocol suite, DHCP, when we make a request, a discover message, and the offers and request acknowledgements, those are using a specific layer four transport protocol. And that happens to be UDP. And let me get the right color here. One moment, boom, boom. I have the tools, I'm not afraid to use them. UDP, now let's talk about transport layer protocols for a moment because we're using them millions of times a day with these application layer services. 
The two major protocols, not the only two, but the two major ones are TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, which is the protocol at layer four that cares. And it cares, TCP cares, because it wants to make sure it's going through. So it, it checks with servers before it actually starts sending data back and forth. Hey, are you there? Yes, you are. Great. Let's sync up and let's go ahead and send acknowledgments periodically because I'm a reliable protocol, says TCP. I want to make sure the data gets there and you got all the pieces and all the segments of data. But on the other hand, this one, UDP, User Datagram Protocol, is the protocol that doesn't really care. Let me, let me demonstrate with something fun. Um, okay, here we go. This is fun. This is a uh, Thunderbolt to DVI adapter. Ready? So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to throw this behind me. And there's a trash can in the back way back corner. Ready? Here we go. All right. So that's how UDP operates. I don't know whether or not it made it into that trash can. I don't know. My job is just to send it and I'm not tracking it. I'm not doing receipts. I'm not looking for acknowledgements. I'm just sending it over. And, uh, you know, that's my job, says UDP. So in the case of DHCP, it shows the protocol, the people who wrote the application layer service of dynamic host configuration protocol, they said, well, we really don't need to have a whole bunch of back and forth and reliability at layer four. I mean, if a client doesn't get an IP address, he can just try again. So they chose to use UDP at layer four, and that's what's being used. So as the as Bob computer, Bob's computer continues to do this DHCP process and do this discover, there is a problem, and it's a big problem right here at the network layer. <laughs> and the network layer is where we have IP addresses. And I've got a question about this PC. Assuming that that PC, PC the PC number one, never was assigned an IP address and we just brought it up and we clicked the button for obtain an IP address automatically, what IP address does it have? And the answer is it doesn't have one. <laughs> so at layer three, when it puts in the source and destination IP addresses for the source address for the PC, it's going to be zero, 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 meaning I don't even, I don't have an IP address. I mean, that's why I'm here. So that's what we would see with the protocol capture is we'd see the client sending out its initial discover message with a source IP address of nada, nothing. And the destination address would be a broadcast, a layer two broadcast, all Fs, or in you know, binary, that would be all ones. But it's a special layer two address, a broadcast address, so that when the switch gets it, the switch says, oh, broadcast, I need to forward this to all other ports in the same VLAN, which also means all other ports in that same local network. So that broadcast goes in, the discover message, and hopefully, hopefully on that local network, on that VLAN, there is something like a DHCP server that hears that, opens it up and says, oh, this is a DHCP request. This client is looking for a DHCP IP address. And if it's a server, then it can turn around, respond and go ahead and do an offer message. So if we go back to our screen for a moment, uh, we also probably should, if you want a little more detail on this UDP, it, uh, UDP has some well-known ports for DHCP. So the client for the source, it would put a source port of UDP port 68 and it would have a UDP destination port of 67. Now, that's not too critical to memorize, but I wanted to point out and contrast that to like say, for example, HTTP or web services, which has a well-known port for TCP of port 80. And that's how, the reason that's important, it's like getting a letter and receiving the letter at your house and then not knowing who it's for. Is it for, you know, uh, spouse, my spouse, or is it for my child, or is it for my guest, or you know, who's it for at the house? So the port information at layer four helps the receiving device realize, oh, this is for port 67 UDP. That's the well-known port that DHCP servers are listening on, and that causes the DHCP server, because it's listening for that port and paying attention to it, to say, okay, I'm gonna further process this, and I'll take a look at your DHCP request. So that's how those pieces fit together. So at the network layer, the source IP address for that discover message is going to be all zeros because the client doesn't have an IP address. The destination address is going to be, I'm going to put B there for broadcast, which is all Fs as it'll appear in a protocol analyzer. And then at the data link layer, that also gets a little bit interesting too because uh, for a source, let me go ahead and um, get the right color there. 
For the source MAC address, it's going to be the client's MAC address. So I'll put, uh, I'm going to put Bob. And the destination MAC address for a broadcast is going to be a layer two broadcast, which once again is a bunch of ones. So it's a special broadcast layer two. And then those bits are set into the switch and the switch forwards that to all other ports in the same VLAN because it's a layer two broadcast. That's what switches do. And hopefully the DHCP server will go ahead and see it. And then the server can respond. They could go back and forth and back and forth. So uh, here's what I propose we do. Um, let's do this. Let's look at, actually, let's configure it. Let's do this. Let's configure it and get it working. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do a protocol capture. And we can actually see the traffic on the network. So let's go back to our topology. And I just realized a huge problem. <clears throat> here's here's the huge problem. Let me get an overlay so I can talk with this in a different color. The problem is this. Bob's computer, this client PC, connected to port 0 slash 1 on switch 1, is an access port assigned to VLAN 10. And that's why I mentioned here that this PC is part of VLAN 10. That's a layer 2 thing. Um, the DHCP server over here is in VLAN 777. This is an access port in VLAN 777, and so the DHCP server is on in VLAN 777, and its IP address is 192.168.1.100. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. If this PC sent out this broadcast saying, I'm doing a discover message, and it's sent as a layer two broadcast, switch one is going to forward that to all other ports in VLAN 10. But this DHCP server, is not in VLAN 10. It is in VLAN 777. And so that means that if we have 20 or 30 VLANs, we don't want to have to put a DHCP server interface in all those VLANs. There's got to be some other way to take local DHCP requests, which are broadcasts, and forward them over to a DHCP server. And the great news is there is an option to do that, and it's called DHCP Relay. Think of it like, think of it like a room. Let's imagine that you and I and everybody in this uh, stream and watching this video are in a giant room. So we're in the room having a good time and uh, we see somebody doing a broadcast, <laughs> a layer two broadcast, a DHCP discover message, looking for a DHCP server. Now, if there's no DHCP server in this room that we're all in, it's gonna time out. And that client probably will try again two or three times before it gives up and won't get an IP address appropriate for the network. However, Let's imagine that you or I, let's pick you. Let's, have, let's say you volunteer, you raise your hand and say, I volunteer to go ahead and, and, and help out any DHCP clients. And we'll say, well, how are you gonna help out? And you might say, well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna listen for any DHCP discover messages from clients. So what that means is at the transport layer on port 67, I'm gonna be listening for that UDP port and if I hear a discover message from somebody else in the room, I'm going to take that request, which is really that discover message, which is looking for a DHCP server, and I'm going to package that up, repackage it. I'm going to turn around really quick, and I'm going to send it over to the real DHCP server, wherever it is in the network. Maybe it's two or three routers away or two or three networks away. doesn't matter. The, this you are going to help by taking that DHCP discover message, wrapping it up, and shipping it over to the DHCP server. And then when the DHCP server receives it, it can see it and say, oh, this request came from, and it'll pay attention to, in the, in the, when you forwarded the message, you'd say what network is for, and because you're connected to this network. And the DHCP server would say, oh, I've got an IP address pool that I can use, and it would make an offer. So the offer would go from the DHCP server back to you, and then you could hand that back to the client. So it's sort of like, a, like an attorney, or a middleman, or a helper, that's basically in the room in the same VLAN, but able to take any DHCP messages and relay them over to the server. And when the server responds back to the relay, it can forward that back to the client. And they call that feature that you're doing a DHCP relay. That's all it is. It's a helper. In fact, the command to implement it is IP helper address. <laughs> so we would configure that on the interface. So a router that's sitting, that has an interface, whether it's a sub interface, or a VLAN interface, or a physical interface, 
you take a router that's sitting in the VLAN, in this case VLAN 10, you enable IP helper, you point to the real DHCP server, and then the client doesn't even know the client makes a discover. The relay forwards that back over to the server, response comes back, forwards back to the client, client does the, uh, the offer comes back, the client does a request, the relay relays that, and then the acknowledgement comes back from the server, and it's all relayed through what's called an, a DHCP relay agent, and that's how that works. So what I would like to do is, let's do all that. <laughs> let's do all that using this topology. It'll be a lot of fun too. So let me go ahead and clear my, uh, some of my scratch there. And so I've got a DHCP server here, and that DHCP server is currently set up, and it's set up to support network 10.16.0 and 172.16.0. Now, in Microsoft, they would call those scopes of addresses. Uh, you can refer to them as pools of addresses either way. It's great. It just simply means that this server has been configured right here to go ahead and be able to hand out IP addresses re regarding the 10.16.0 and 172.16.0 networks. And before we actually try this, we should probably verify this. And so let's go to the lab. So let me go ahead and bring that up. All right, so this client at the moment is a statically assigned IP address. It doesn't have DHCP assigned address yet. Let's go to my web server, which is here. It's actually a web server. It's actually a a Windows server, so it does lots of cool things, including DHCP. So this is the DHCP manager inside of Windows Server, and I've got a scope, which means a pool of addresses for 172.16, which is going to be for the benefit of VLAN 20, and I've got a pool for 10.16.0.0, which is appropriate for VLAN 10. So that looks good, and if we take a look at the options for each one, for the 172.16 network, think of like options like bonuses like hey here's an IP address and by the way here's the mask here's the DNS server DNS domain name system is what we use to um, if we want to go to www.cbtnuggets.com or some other site behind the scenes that name it needs to be translated into an IP address so we can actually forward to that IP address and DNS is the primary way on the internet that we resolve names to IP addresses. So at the application layer, there's another service called DNS. It also uses UDP, and we can use it to make a request to resolve names to IP addresses from a DNS server. So that's one of the options that we can hand out with the IP address. So the DHCP server and its offer says, hey, here's an IP address, here's the mask, here's the default gateway, here's the DNS server, and other options as well that that client may need. So that's what these options are. And so we're handing out, or will be handing out, the default gateway of 172.16.0.1. <laughs> and for the DNS server, I am going to delete that. That's a bogus address. 169, just so you know, if you see an IP address that's 169, that means something went wrong. Uh, that's an automatically assigned private IP address space and um, uh, APIPA, automatically auto. That's when you have a client or a device that can't find a uh, DHCP server and it uses that wacky 169 address. A PIPA, I think, is the short is the name for it. So I'm going to remove that. So it's going to hand out a domain name to a client, also a router, uh, a default gateway for that client. So in my network here, just to show you, um, I have a default gateway set up for each of these VLANs, VLANs 10, 20, and 777. Um, there's two ways of doing that. There's more than two ways of doing that. But the two ways that we've talked about in these sessions in this playlist for CCNA are we could do routing based on the VLAN interfaces on the multi-layer switch, or we could use sub-interfaces on the external router with router on a stick. If you want to catch up on those, both those videos are available. So that's currently set up, and the default gateway is dot one for both those subnets. And so from a DHCP server perspective, what we would do is we would go ahead and um, make sure that when a client gets an IP address, it, it's also given the right default gateway. So uh, this pool here, here's the pool range. It's 172.16.0.151 through 200. That'll be appropriate for VLAN 20. And the address pool for the 1016 network is .151 through 200. And I did those ranges just so it'd be really easy to see when we get an IP address. Hey, guess what? That's the IP address came from the pool. And then for um, options for this network, I'm also going to remove the bogus DNS server because that's not <laughs> the 169 address is not going to help anybody. So I'm going to delete that. 
Or if we want, you know, we could add an option too. Uh, configure options. Let's go ahead and add a DNS server. And let's go ahead and use the DNS server of DC Nug because it actually is running D, uh, DNS services. And the, let's see here, resolve, yeah. Oh gosh, golly. You know what this means is that my server has at least that IP address on one of its interfaces. I just said to resolve it. All right, I'm just gonna put in the IP address I know works, so. Uh, 192.168.1.100. All right, and I digress. All right, but we are gonna hand out, let's make sure it's reachable. Yay, okay. And I'm gonna hand out that for both of them. So scope options for both subnets are going to include a valid DNS server. So configure options, DNS server, click 192.168.1.100, add, All right, cool. And, you know, I'm spending a little time here in the interface for a DNS server that's not a Cisco device, but um, what are the chances in a production environment that you are gonna have the opportunity <laughs> to work with, as you use your networking skills, to work with administrators on Linux and Windows and other operating systems and other devices? So it's important to be familiar with how other services and how other operating systems are implemented because they're integrating with you. So we're not in a bubble ever in a production environment. We're working with application developers and DNS administrators and you know a lot of different people. So it never hurts to have a little more exposure. All right, so the DNS server is all set up. It looks like it is. And, and now that that's set up, let me go back and let's, <laughs> let's do a couple things. I'm gonna do these in the right order because if we don't, it's not gonna be very happy happy. So the right order would be on this multi-layer switch, it's got sub interfaces for VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and VLAN 777. And on each of those sub interfaces, I need to go ahead, each of those VLAN interfaces, switch virtual interfaces, we need to go tell those interfaces, hey, listen, Mr. Switch 3, if you see discover messages, we need you to take those, wrap them up, and ship them over to the DHCP server because otherwise, It'll be a broadcast in VLAN 10 or a broadcast in VLAN 20, and it won't get there. So what we'll do is we'll go to each of the logical layer three interfaces on switch three. And if you need a tutorial on, um, in the playlist, I've got some videos on multi-layer switches and VLAN interfaces. So we're gonna take each of those VLAN interfaces and we're gonna enable the IP helper on each of them saying, hey, the real DHCP server is at this address in preparation for bringing these clients online and giving them DHCP assigned addresses. So let's do that next. And to do that, we'll go back to our console. We'll go to switch three, make sure we're on the right device, show IP interface brief. All right, so here are our three logical layer three interfaces. So we have a logical layer three interface supporting clients in VLAN 10. We have one supporting clients in VLAN 20, and we have clients supporting uh, we have an interface supporting clients in VLAN 777. Also, um, <laughs> if you're watching these, it, and at least one of the videos, I had my DHCP server, that Windows server, using .5 as a default gateway. Anyway, I fixed him. I, I told my DH, I told the uh, Windows server, hey, listen, buddy, your default gateway for the 777 VLAN, which, which is the 192.168.1 network, the default gateway is gonna be one, And that's why right here in the interface, I configured this multi-layer switch interface VLAN 777 with that address because the uh, the PCs on that network are expecting to use it. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll do a config T interface VLAN 10, referring to the logical layer three switched virtual interface. And we'll say IP helper address. Come on, you can do it, there we go. IP helper address and 192.168.1.100. And what that means is if there's a DHCP discover message, on this segment, on this VLAN, this interface is gonna hear it, take that request, ship it over to the DHCP server, and act as a go-between between the DHCP server at 192.168.1.100 and the client who's asking for the IP address. And we'll do the same thing for interface VLAN 20. So we'll go to interface VLAN 20, same helper address, same DHCP server that hasn't moved. And then one more, uh, and then for VLAN 777, we don't need to because we don't have any DHCP clients on VLAN 777. We just have a bunch of servers over there. 
All right, so if we do a show IP interface for VLAN 10, let me uh, do this. Let me do a show IP interface for VLAN 10, pipe include help. Uh, wait a sec here. Show IP interface VLAN 10. I was sure it was going to show us that. Hold on a second. VLAN 10. Helper address right there. Oh, it's capital H. Dang. Okay. So I was trying to do a shortcut here. I'll do it again, but I'll put a capital H there so it actually shows up. Basically, that says, please show me the output of show IP interface for VLAN 10. Pipe only include lines that have the these literal characters, capital H E L P. So there's the helper address. Just wanted to verify that it's set for that interface. And we'll do the same thing for interface VLAN 20 just to verify our work. All right, great. So now let's go to a client. And um, oh, you know what I want to do? Uh, so we're going to modify the client. This is the client PC. I'm going to show you where he's at. So this client PC is sitting right here in VLAN 10. So it's on an access port in VLAN 10. And what we're going to do is we're simply going to tell it to get an IP address via DHCP, which means get an IP address automatically, which will cause this computer at the application layer to do a DHCP request. It's going to source it from the UDP port 68, sending it to the well-known port for DHCP at 67. It's going to have zeros for the initial layer 2 address for source, broadcast at layer 2 for its MAC address, layer I'm oh, sorry, broadcast at layer three. And then for the layer two, it's gonna have the source MAC address and a destination layer two broadcast, and it's gonna send it on the network. And what I would like to do is, I would like to capture that live and so that we can do it. So I'm gonna, hi, <laughs> I'm gonna set that up in the background real quick because there's, uh, there's gonna be a few clicks involved that uh, may be a bit beyond uh, what's really required. So let me go ahead and do some magic and capture on both segments. So I'm going to capture here. Yep, that's running. And I'm going to capture here. Oh, yeah, that's going to be beautiful. So in the topology, let me show you what I just did. And that is this. I set up a capture so that I can capture all the packets in and out on this interface that goes to the client and also all the packets in and out that are going out to the server. And that way we can see the interaction between this DHCP client and the helper interface. So the helper address, the helper interface for VLAN 10 is 10.16.0.1. And the DHCP server is over here at 192.168.1.100. So when this client does the DHCP discover, what should happen is uh, this guy should pick it up, ship it over the network, over to the server. Server should respond back, and we should be able to see the entire conversation twice, <laughs> once here and once here. This would be between the VLAN 10 client and the DHCP relay, and this over here would be the conversation between the relay, which is the interface VLAN 10 and the DHCP server. So if that all works out, it wouldn't be a miracle, but it'd be really, really cool. So that's capturing. Let's go to our client. So we're going to go to this client PC in VLAN 10. Here he is. And uh, let's go ahead into IPv4. Click on Properties. And then we'll simply say Obtain an IP address automatically. And Obtain the DNS server automatically as well. And click on OK. Click on Close. And let's bring up a command prompt and verify. So this is always fun. <laughs> always fun. Let's do IP config. And I'm going to do an all slash all IP config slash all. That'll show us the DHCP server information as well. I'm going to scroll up here a little bit. Oh, look at that right there. So we got the IP address assigned 10.16.0.151. Uh, there's the mask, which means the first three octets, the first three numbers are the network. The last number here, the 151, is the host address. Uh, the default gateway was assigned. That was an option. And this is the DHCP server right there. And the only reason that's working is because we have the IP helper function, the DHCP relay, on that interface VLAN uh, 10 on the multi-layer switch. So let, let me pause for a moment 
and go grab those captures and make sure they actually came out okay. All right, so I'm gonna click on stop to that one and stop to that one. All right, let me go ahead and bring this up. All right, this is gonna be fascinating. Let's do, uh, okay, so this is the, this capture right here is the capture between the client and the local VLAN 10 network. So if we do, a, I'm gonna do a filter. In some versions of Wireshark, this is a packet capture program. In some versions, uh, boot P is what you have to put. In other versions, you can actually type in DHCP, but effectively, these are the DHCP packets that it captured uh, on the network. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, it looks like, looks like he did a discover twice and only one of those was responded to, so I'm gonna hide those because they're not applicable. Oh. Edit, is there an undo? So let, there, let there be an undo. I, I was doing control D and I thought, uh, <laughs> oh, ignore, unignore, hold on a second. Let me just uh, save this capture, file, save as, and I'm gonna put it on the desktop. And I'm gonna call it uh, client DHCP side. Oh, I should just remove the, um, let me try this, boot P. Yeah, I think I deleted them. <laughs> All right, okay, plan B, here's plan B. Plan B is I have captures from earlier today because I wanted to make sure I could get these to you. I don't want to run the DH, so let's let me go ahead and bring this up. This will be just as good. All right, so here we go. That works. <laughs> these, are, these are from an hour ago. They're still fresh. So this is the discover message from the client. So if we look at, let me get my pen out here. Thanks for your patience, by the way. I wanted to make sure by hook or crook I could show this. So this is the discover message. So at layer two right here, the source layer two address is Bob's computer. The layer two broadcast address is all Fs, which is the broadcast at layer two. For the IP network layer information, the source IP address was all zeros because Bob's computer doesn't have an IP address yet. And the destination address is the broadcast address at layer three, which is all ones in binary as well. And so then the at layer four, we're using UDP. And the source port was 80. I'm sorry, source port is 68, and the destination port is the well-known port for DHCP services, which is 67, and this initial request is a discover. So in this discover message, it's broadcast to the network. Here's the client source MAC address, which is Bob's, and it says, hey, I'm looking for a DHCP server. Now, in response to this broadcast here on VLAN 10, here's what happened next. As I, uh, let's see if I can rotate, there we go. Oh, look at that. All right, so this is the offer. Let me clear the screen. This is the offer from the DHCP relay agent, which is the, the internet inter, VLAN 10 interface with the IP helper configured. And at layer two, this is the source MAC address of that layer three interface, which is the VLAN 10 interface. The destination address is the address of, of Bob. At layer three, the source address is 10.16.0.1, which is the IP address on that switch virtual interface for VLAN 10. And the destination it puts there is the IP address that it sees in the offer. So even though Bob's computer really isn't using that IP address yet, that's the one he's going to be using. So it automatically put that in the layer three header. Um, at the moment, it's not gonna be too good until Bob requests it and starts using it. But there it is. For the response, it's going from the server port, from the well-known port back to the port that Bob originally requested it on. So those are flipped. In the original discover, it was from port 68 to port 67. And for the response, it's from 67 to 68. And here's the offer. So, whoa, let's, fun times. Let's find out what's in the offer. Like, <laughs> what's in it? And here's what's in it. The DHCP relay, because he got this information from the server, is responding and saying, okay, here's what's in the offer. Um, I'm offering you this IP address, 10.16.0.151. And I'm also offering you, if we opened up these other values here, like the mask, it'd be a slash 24 bit mask, which means that the first three octets, the first three numbers of the network. I was also telling him about how long this lease is good for, how, when he should renew it. Um, the default gateway is right here. The DNS server is here. 
the domain name is here, and those are all included in this offer. So the offer came from the server, got forwarded back to the relay, and this is the relay forwarding it back to the actual client so the client can take it. So if the client accepts this, which I hope it does, that would be in our next packet, which would be packet number three. This is the R. So the process is D-O-R-A, discover from the client, offer from the server, request, which we're looking at right now, from the client that says, yeah, I'd love it. So this is the request from the client saying, I'll take it, it all looks good. So the source MAC address at layer two is Bob's computer. The destination, now this broadcast for this third packet varies based on, based on some other options. So it's really safe to say the initial discover is always broadcast <laughs> and the rest, some of that is up to the configuration and some flags that are set. But it is safe to say the original discover is always broadcast. That's always a true statement. Okay, um, and I'm not talking about a renewal of an IP address. I'm talking about the initial discover to get an IP address to begin with. So at layer three, we have the source IP address. The Bob is still not using the IP address. He's saying, I'd like to take it. He's saying, I'd like to request that IP address. It's sent as a broadcast in this situation based on some flags that are set and it is a request. So Bob is saying, hey, uh, you know you offered me this beautiful IP address, which is, um, let's see here, requested IP address, and you also offered me uh, the, where's the other parameters? Host, wow, okay. So in this request, he's requesting the IP address that was offered, and then in the final piece here, which is the actual acknowledgement, this is the acknowledgement coming from the relay agent, which is the middleman for the server. And this is the acknowledgement saying to the client, you can have it. So this is the relay agent's layer two address for source, the relay agent's layer three address for source, um, the destination layer two address for Bob's computer, the destination layer three address for Bob's computer, the source and destination port going back to port 68 on Bob's computer. And this is the acknowledgement. And so here we're acknowledging that you have this address. Uh, there's going to be a mask in here. There we go. The mask, the default gateway, the DNS server, the domain name, or any other options that you had included as options that were going to be sent to the client. So that's what it looks like. So that's what it looks like between the client. Who, and the client really doesn't know. I mean, the client doesn't know or care that the DHCP server is not local. The, the client's just saying, Discover gets an offer, makes a request, and gets an acknowledgement. Says, "Great, I'm good to go." So uh, it's the relay that's taking all that client side activity and forwarding it over to the real DHCP server. Now we do have a capture because we just made it of the DHCP server piece of that, and we can take a look at that. And I won't delete them this time. <laughs> My apologies on that. Let's take a look at the server side as well. So this will be the conversation between the DHCP relay, which is the interface with the IP helper feature on our multi-layer switch for interface VLAN 10 and the DHCP server at 192.168.1.100. So let's take a look at that as well. So to do that, let's go back to the right interface, which is right here, great. And I will minimize that capture. And this is the one, this is the capture between um, the relay agent and the server. So I'm gonna filter the output with a display filter, and here we go. So these first two have a, have a different transaction ID. So there was a discover and offer, they didn't hit, they didn't take for whatever reason, so we actually start here. So this is 10.16.01. Let me go ahead and uh, view and packet bytes and give us a little more room here. So this first packet here, this discover message is forwarded from 10.16.01, which is the interface VLAN 10 switch virtual interface being forwarded over to the server at 192.168.1.100. So here's the layer two information regarding that. Here's the layer three information regarding that. Here is the UDP. So it's UDP source port 67 going to the destination port of 67. Now 67 is the well-known port for DHCP services. So the relay is actually using that same source port for sending it over. Not too hard, not too important to memorize, but that's literally what's happening here. And if we then take a look at the payload, which is the DHCP discover message, I'll bring this up a little bit. All right, right there. And 
That'll be enough. Great. So it's a discover message, and uh, this is the relay agent's IP address. And that's important because the server, when he receives this message from the DHCP relay, needs to know uh, which subnet should I hand out an IP address for? Should it be for the 192 network or the 1016 network or the 172.16 network? And it's going to use this information in combination with a few other flags to help identify the correct network from its pools to go ahead and assign from. This is the client's MAC address. That's the literal layer two address of Bob, who's who needs the IP address. And if we scroll down a little more, we have the message type and we have the host name. And basically, this is just asking for an IP address. If we go to the response, this is the offer. So this is the offer coming from the DHCP server going back to the relay agent. So if we take a look at the details for that, the source address at layer two is the, let me make sure I have my ducks in line, is the, well, the source address is the DHCP server and the destination address for layer two, if we're gonna be honest about this, the destination layer two address is gonna be the default gateway that the DHCP server, the, the Windows server is using. So we've taken a look at that in other videos about whose layer two address are we going to use. So the source address in this case is definitely, because I captured it on the link right next to the DHCP server, the source address is the DHCP server and the layer two address is gonna be the layer two address of the DHCP server's default gateway. All right, I wanna make sure I wasn't gonna mislead anybody because that's literally how it works. All right, and then we have at layer three, the source address of the server, the destination address of the uh, relay agent, and then the ports involved, the D user datagram protocol ports at layer four, and then the DHCP offer message. So in this offer, if we go down, uh, all the details are here. So here's the, it's an offer. Here's the, I, the IP address is right here, the one we're offering, 151. Here's the mask. It's a 24-bit it's a mask, which means the first three octets are the network. It uh, has information on how often it has to be renewed. Here's the default gateway showing up as option three, which is 10.16.01. Here's the DNS server that it could use and the domain name that it should use. So if we go back to our client, let's make a road trip over to our client. Well, let's finish this and then we'll go to our client. And then after that offer, the client requests it. And this is the request. Let me go ahead and collapse all these. This is the request uh, coming, again, captured between the relay agent and the DHCP server. This is the request to the client saying, I'll take it. And then finally, we have an acknowledgement from the server going back saying, great, I know you got it, enjoy it. So if we went to the client who has this IP address and we did a command like IP config slash all, there's the domain name that we handed out. There's the default gateway that we handed out. There's its IP address. Now, even though the capture, well, yeah, this, so, it got the same IP address in the earlier capture today as well as the one we just did. There's its IP address. There's the mask. And this indicates where we got the IP address from, from that DHCP server at 192.168.1.100. And what I think we got to do is let's test a couple more. So now that we've seen the process, let's go ahead and test this. Uh, going back to our topology, we have another PC in VLAN 20. So in VLAN 20, if this client becomes a DHCP client, we should have the same process, except now it'll be the VLAN 20 sub-interface on switch three with the IP helper feature that sees that discover message, routes it over to the DHCP server. DHCP server hands out an IP address appropriate for VLAN 20, which is in the 172.16 network. And then there's gonna be a request and acknowledgement and PC, tw PC 20 should also be able to get an IP address. I think that'd be worth verifying. So let's do that. Let's go back to our management computer. And let me arrange this a little bit so you can see it all. Great, great, great. All right, and let's go to PC2. Uh, I just wanna make sure I'm on the right PC. So PC2, yes. So PC2 is connected to uh, switch one via port zero slash two, which is assigned as an access port in VLAN 20. So let's go ahead and check that out. So in this virtual machine, on this little teeny virtual machine, the, co the command is IP DHCP. We'll press enter and it actually, visually shows us going through the Dora process, discover, offer, request, and acknowledgement <laughs> from the client's perspective. And it was assigned 172.16.0.151, and it was assigned the default gateway 172.16.0.1. So if this guy does a, uh, so we do a show IP, 
Well, look at that, got the domain name, which is the option, one of the options. And there's the DHCP server, and there's the lease information regarding how long it can keep the lease. Wow, and there's the DNS server. Wow, love it. So if we did a, a ping to, uh, um, let's go ahead and do a DC nug. <laughs> yeah, I uh, couldn't resolve it. All right, so if you want to do name resolution, you have to make sure it's resolvable. Let me take, let me, let's go on a quick, uh, you know what, let's, let's just take a quick look at DNS on this guy and ping an address that's in DNS. So you can have a DNS server, but it's got to work. So I'm going to launch DNS Manager here on Windows. And let's go to Forward Lookup Zones, NuggetLab.com. What do you got? Uh, DC Nug, right? DC Nug, that should work. DC Nug.NuggetLab.com if DNS is working. Mm, mm. I'm going to try that again. Let's try that again. Let's go back to our uh, client. Now I'm just curious. dcnug.nuggetlab.com. Oh, it resolved to 10.1.0. So the name resolution worked. It just resolved it to some wacky address. And then we just couldn't reach it. I wasn't paying attention to the output here. Let's uh, let's go fix DNS. Let's add a real fun name. Let's go ahead and add a new host record. So an A record is an IPv4 record in DNS that can be resolved to a IP address. So let's call it Bubba. Bubba.nuggetlab.com. And let's have that be 192.168.1.0. Uh, I know 100 is reachable because that's this DHCP server. So let's go ahead and do that. Great. And done. We'll go back to our client. And we'll do a ping to Bubba. There we go. So the name resolution worked because DNS is working. And uh, then we have five pings because we have a, a IP address assigned via DHCP. We have a correct default gateway and life is good. We'll also do a, a nugget on DNS or a video on DNS as well in this process of getting things working and understanding how the network flies. So in our video today, we I wanted to cover a few specific things and I think I, I added a couple which I hope you hope you enjoyed. Number one, I wanted to identify the process that we can use to automatically assign IP addresses to devices, and that is DHCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. There's two parts to it. One is a server that's running a DHCP server service, and in a small office, home office, you, you might have a DHCP server on that local device, like a home office router and so forth. Or at a branch office, you might have a, a Cisco router acting as a little DHCP server, but most of the time, it's gonna be something more industrial or corporate uh, that's handing out IP addresses dynamically, something involving Microsoft Active Directory or a Linux box that's dedicated to doing that. So DHCP is dynamically assigning IP addresses. The problem, however, is that the broadcast, the initial discover is broadcast and broadcast don't leave Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. A layer two broadcast, a layer three broadcast, which equates to a layer two broadcast, if it happens in a VLAN, stays in the VLAN. And if there's no DHCP server listening, on UDP port 67, there's not gonna be a response to that discover. So to solve that, we put on the routed interfaces in VLAN 10, at least one interface, we enable IP helper. And that, that feature is called DHCP relay. And it says to the interface, hey, if you see a DHCP discover message, just take it, wrap it up, and unicast it. That means send it to a specific IP address, not a broadcast, a specific IP address of the DHCP server. And then the DHCP server gets it, identifies the appropriate VLAN or subnet rather that it should get a hand out an IP address for, makes an offer, and then there's a request from the client, then a final acknowledgement, and all of that is relayed through that helper interface. In our case, it was interface VLAN 10. But if it was a traditional router, it could be interface gig 00. Or if we're doing router on a stick, it could be interface gig 00.10 or whatever the sub interface is. And then uh, we labbed it up and verified it, including doing some protocol captures to actually see the traffic in action as it happened, which was a lot of fun. So I appreciate you joining me for another CCNA Sunday. And I'm gonna add this to the playlist. If, if you liked any of this video or if it was helpful at all, click on the like button. That's always useful. Um, if you have a question or comment, please add that below as well. If you haven't subscribed, I want, you, I want you to do two things right now. Take a moment and click on subscribe and then hit the bell icon and that way, when there's new live streams or playlists are updated, you can be aware of that and go through them. 
So uh, I'm building the playlist every time we do a live stream. I'm taking the, the master playlist in order and I'm surgically injecting the new live streams so that they're going to be in order. And then as I identify a new thing that like that, that needs to be done, like, oh, yeah, we should add something on this. And a lot of feedback I've gotten from you as well. Oh, I need to do that. If it's at the CCNA level or close or useful, uh, I'm going to make a video on it. And so um, I'm just adding those to the playlist. So those playlists are easy to find. Just go to my channel, click on playlist, and then get the playlist that's most attuned to what you want to find and see and watch. And then you just, instead of saying play the whole playlist, just click on view entire playlist, and then it'll line them all up. Me and Mr. Sloth. I got, uh, he has a cousin now. Um, <laughs> it'll line them all up, and you can just basically take the ones that you want and in the right order. So if you're in a video down here, and think, oh, he's talking about, 802.1Q trunking for this feature or that feature, or he's talking about layer two switching and you haven't quite covered that or you need to revisit that, the playlist, just boom, go right through it. Um, also, if you want, um, oh, oh, I, I had this thought today in the shower. <laughs> Probably too much information. Uh, the thought was, I am very interested in this community doing, uh, helping everybody else who wants to learn the CCNA type content at the entry level going into professional, mostly CCNA for this channel. And so if you have recommendations on free training, um, I would like you to post that down below for the benefit of everybody else. Um, one of those, in fact, I'm gonna bring it up. I'm gonna talk to you for a moment while I bring it up. I, I was searching the web. I'm gonna let you look at the side of my head just for a moment. I was uh, searching the web and looking at content and I came across something that I thought was just amazing. <laughs> and I wanna share it with you and it's free. And uh, let me bring it up, and I'll, <laughs> you, get, you guys can see what I search on and what I look at uh, here in just a moment. Let's see here, YouTube, and I'm gonna search for Here we go. All right, I'm bringing this up, and I'm gonna go ahead and line it up. Here we go, boom, there we go. So uh, this is Jeremy's IT lab. I don't, I have never met yet. Uh, I haven't met Jeremy, um, this Jeremy. Uh, I, I've watched several of his videos in this playlist for Jeremy's IT lab. That's his web, that's his, uh, that's his YouTube channel, Jeremy's IT lab. And I gotta tell you, it's amazing. I love this guy. Uh, he is laying out in measurable terms the topics and the ideas and also showing how to uh, build Packet Tracer to practice these labs and get the hands on. And, and I was thinking to myself, I, I, everybody should know about this site. Um, I, I think, <laughs> in all fairness, I think everybody should know about this site, the one we're on right now and watching to enjoy in order the playlist. Uh, and if, if we can complement that with other things that are also very, very useful, uh, bring it on. So if you have any great resources that you enjoy or have enjoyed using in the past that are free, that's what I'm primarily interested with this discussion for this video, please post them for the benefit of everybody else. And there are a lot of commercial resources. I mean, people know that I work for CBT Nuggets and we have some amazing content there and labs, all that. So uh, you know about most of the paid options I'm already familiar with, but I'm also right now focused on, let's get some free recommendations that people uh, can really benefit from. Because I think that if somebody went through Jeremy's IT Labs, which I went through a lot of his videos, and I loved them, I thought, wow, this is great. This is great. Oh, that's great. He's showing them exactly. So if somebody went through like my playlist, and they went through Jeremy's playlist, and they did all the practice that he's asking you to do, and showing you how to do in the hands-on lab, and going through all the concepts with me, and, and reinforcing each other's, that'd be a win. And again, this is not sponsored by Jeremy's IT lab. I hope to meet Jeremy in person someday. But in the meantime, I just wanted to point out that it's a great resource. And so please feel free to uh, add comments down below regarding other great resources that you have used or have enjoyed that have been beneficial so that we can all benefit from them together. I want to be like the uh, Macy's Santa Claus from uh, Christmas, um, Miracle on 34th Street, where at least in one edition of one version of that movie, uh, the the mother comes up to Santa Claus and says, um, "I need the the Barf Blaster 2000 or some toy or and and uh, but it's so like it's so expensive." And Santa Claus leans over and says, "Yeah, um, we have that, but this other store has it too, and they have a forty percent discount or something." And the idea was, let's do the right thing. I mean, there's a lot of people who have zero 
uh, resources financially outside of their obligations, um, zero discretionary income where they don't have any money to do, you know, go out and buy some routers or buy a subscription to something. So for those individuals, and people even do have that discretionary income, it's a great idea to have the tools. So between Packet Tracer and websites like this one, which I hope you're subscribing to and liking and, and joining us for each and every one of these sessions, um, there can be a lot of progress made in the right direction. And then if you want to you know, take it to the next level and, and have a subscription somewhere or buy a book or have a paid course, whatever, those are all great options too. And sometimes they can shorten that time period. But that's my request, my call to action, three things. Number one, subscribe if you haven't. Number two, hit the bell so you can make sure you get alerts. And three, post in the comments about recommendations you have about any free resources that can help people in their growth, in their progress, especially those who are just starting out in the world of IT and in the world of Cisco CCNA. All right, well, I had a lot of fun with DHCP and DHCP Relay today. Uh, it is Sunday, so that concludes a CCNA Sunday. I've got another live stream on Wednesday and we're getting back to more subnetting on Saturday and then we're back to CCNA Sunday seven days from now. So everybody who is supporting this channel with your feedback and with your um, helping of other people, I just want, I want another call out for Pat and Thomas and uh, Gus, and I know I'm leaving off a whole bunch of people. Um, you know who you are, and I'm so grateful for your input and your support, and I'll see you, my friends, as I cue up some exit music, I'll see you in a future video. Thanks, everybody. Does